Last Destiny, Volume 1, I Thy Keeper, Chapter 1. Last Destiny, Volume 1, I Thy Keeper, Interlude. Last Destiny, Volume 1, I Thy Keeper, Interlude. On the world of Rajaka, in a village known as Vathia, the journey is about to unfold. A gathering shall take place of friends in the aftermath and a small village shall be no more. At this time, four sorcerers head for a central point which is in the skies of Athea. When they meet, the chain reaction of their awesome meeting for the first time produces so much raw magical energy, the small village of Athea is completely wiped out. The four sorcerers don't even look toward the destruction. Instead, they get on with the conversation with for what led... <coughs> On the world of Rajaka in a village known as Athea, the joining is about to unfold. A gathering shall take place of friends in the aftermath and a small village shall be no more. At this time, four sorcerers head for a central point which is in the skies of Athea. When they meet, the chain reaction of their awesome meeting for the first time produces so much raw magical energy, the small village of Athea is completely wiped out. The four sorcerers don't even look toward the destruction. Instead, they go on with the conversation which led them to... <coughs> on the world of Rajaka in a village known as Athea, the joining is about to unfold. A gathering shall take place of friends in the aftermath and a small village shall be no more. At this moment, four sorcerers head for a central point which is in the skies of Athea. When they meet, the chain reaction of their awesome meeting for the first time produces so much raw magical energy, the small village of Athea is completely wiped out. The four sorcerers don't even look toward the destruction. Instead, they get on with the conversation which led them together. On the world of Rajaka in a village known as Athea, the joining is about to unfold. A gathering shall take place of friends in the aftermath and a small village shall be no more. At this moment, four sorcerers head for a central point which is in the skies of Athea. When they meet, the chain reaction of their awesome meeting for the first time produces so much raw magical energy, the small village of Athea is completely wiped out. The four sorcerers don't even look toward the destruction. Instead, they get on with the conversation which led them to come together. The eldest sorcerer states, Hi. I am Hagashi, the oldest sorcerer in the world. I have called you here because we are the most powerful beings in the world and I have a way that we can be even more powerful, a way we will be gods and rule this world. How about everyone introduce yourselves? The, next, the sorcerer next to him says,
on the road of Rajaka, in a village known as Ophia, the joining is about to unfold. A gathering shall take place of friends in the aftermath, and a small village shall be no more. At this moment, four sorcerers head for a central point which is in the skies of Ophia. When they meet, the chain reaction of their awesome meeting for the first time produces so much raw magical energy, the small village of Ophia is completely wiped out. The four sorcerers don't even look toward the destruction. Instead, they get on with the conversation which led them to come together. The eldest sorcerer states, Hi, I am Hagashi, the oldest sorcerer in the world. I have called you here because we are the most powerful beings in the world, and I have a way that we can be even more powerful, a way we will be gods and rule this world. How about everyone introduce yourselves? The sorcerer next to him says, I am Nishi, the second oldest. The next sorcerer says, I am Minamai. Then the last of the sorcerers says, I am Kita, the most powerful sorcerer. All the other sorcerers sigh. So what is your theory? Hagashi says, It is no theory, my fellow. It is truth. Have ye heard of the dragon Ryu and his home, Ryugu? They all say yes. I know of its whereabouts. I always have, but it is only now that I have and will be able to use it. Kita says, why is that? Well, as you might know, Ryu was in prison and Ryugu, supposedly, at the beginning of time. And the only way to free him is to open Ryugu. But one needs the full power of a god. We almost possess the full power of God, but not quite. We need to gather mystical items from all over the world, which will, and when we do, we can free Ryu from Ryugu. He will be at our full command, and he will make us into pure living, breathing gods. So what do you think? Kida says, truly remarkable. I'll join. Manami says, I'm in. Nishi says, when? Hagashi says, I will send a message to you for our next meeting. As he says that, they depart their separate ways. Chapter 1. Loss. Back on ground, a male survivor who witnessed a portion of the meeting is still in shock as he looks down and says, Suchi, 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 are you? He looks desperately in both directions amongst the ruins of their home. The survivor, who was a salesman, sees no Suchi. Then his eyes buck and he mumbles, Suchi, as he notices two small fingers peering out of the rubble. He goes over and pushes the rubble apart to find a bloody arm. Tears fall from his eyes and he breathes deeply. He pulls apart more of the rubble to find a young female child, cold and lifeless. The salesman already knows she's dead. He touches the blood which has come from her lips. He thinks she, she didn't even give off a scream. He pulls her body to him, holding her dead body in his arms close to him. He cries and says in a low voice, Sasuchi, my Suchi, oh Suchi, no. He looks up, then he slowly lets his child go and hit the ground and says, Sasuchi, Miyu is with you. No, forget this miserable world of pain and unlove. The salesman pulls his sword, places it in the ground, and yanks it out. Closing his eyes, he prepares to gut himself as someone yells, Kahira! The salesman's eyes open and he sees a frantic adult, male and female, he mumbles, Cayenne and Mayora. Cayenne says, Kahira, what are you? I mean, do you plan on doing, my friend? Mayora doesn't speak. She acts, walking over calmly and quietly. She takes the sword from Kahira and hugs him. He reluctantly cries and lowly says, They took her from me. They took her from me. Kayan walks over and looks down at the rubble surrounding Kahira and says, Oh no, little Suchi. He gives off a tear. Mayoria says, By killing yourself, Kahira, you would only do those who killed her justice. Kayan says, We can get your vengeance with revenge, my friend. Mayoria wipes away her tears. Kahira wipes away his tears and says, Never again shall I cry. Never again. Those four. They were sorcerers without a doubt. They gathered for some foolish reason, I believe of global domination. And I say we prevent it, eh? 
Cayenne says, you already know I'm at your side, old friend, with my wife, Mayora, to the end. Kahira says, thank you. We should go to Rasusi's kingdom and ask will he lend us an army or, or let us join a band of his knights in order to try to stop them. I know they are the legendary four sorcerers of the wind. They all possess shrines. We could destroy each of them, one at a time. It's possible the sorcerers will be there, or we can draw them out from this action. Mayoria says, then let's go. But wait, what about your daughter? Kahira says, we shall leave her here. Cayenne says, you really don't want to bury her? I can't. Not until her killers are brought to justice. Neither of them question Kahira's plan. They get ready to head out of the village but are stopped by a young man who says, Hey, I'm Klein Peters. Do you all come from this village? Kahira answers, Yes. What happened? Kahira says, The legendary four sorcerers joined and destroyed it, killing all but us, even my precious daughter Suchi. I would hope that the king will lend us his helping hand because if they are not stopped now, our world will be in terrible danger. A startled Klein says, Well then, let me let you be on your way. But know this, King Rususi be a stubborn tyrant who will not listen to anyone but himself. Oh, but I can show you the way. When they reach the gates of Rususi's kingdom, Klein departs as Kahira says, Thank you. But Klein just keeps his way. They head in and walk through the village. They stop for water at the city's water barrel, then head toward the castle. They notice the city is is as stone, silent, and lifeless, the civilians removed from roaming as though captives in their homes. Once they reach the castle, they go straight in and walk toward the main room. They see the king on his throne and the high knight stands near. They are the only individuals in this open area. As they come in, King Rasusi stands and says, Who are you all? Kahira says, I am Kahira. This is Cayenne and Mayoria. We are of Afia. King Rasusi says, Well, I have never had complaints coming from Afia. Have you come to complain? Huh? What is it? Kahira says, No, King Rasusi, we have not. You see, Afia has been destroyed completely, and we are its only survivors. We wish to bring its destroyers to justice. King Rasusi says, Oh, and who might that be? None other than the legendary four sources of the wind. They have joined. We wish to prevent them from bringing war on the world with the aid of your army. So what do you think? King Rasusi grows quiet for a while and stares at Kahira. They stare at each other in silence. Then King Rasusi thinks, this fool would have me give him an army? Who on Rajaka is this individual to demand anything of me? This is the first and only word I have even heard of such a thing occurring. The mythic four sorcerers. Who can say they even exist? A madman, this one, who wishes to take my honor from the people and bestow among himself and his kinsmen? They then stare in quietness for a moment more as Rasusi makes an almost smirk. Kahira looks toward Cayenne and quietly says, I think he's going to say yes. He then turns back to the king. King Rasusi then says, no. Have you all lost your minds? As though you wannabes might lead a battalion, no less than against a group of myths, claiming something I have no word of? For all I know, you bunch burned down your own town coming to me with such a ridiculous fable. Leave. Kahira turns and they walk out. Kahira says, worse than Plain said he was. He must have known him. As they leave the castle's bridge, the high knight stops them and says, Well, where do you troublesome bunch think you are going? He has come with a small band of knights. Kahira returns and barks back angrily. What do you want? The high knight replies, You all may have committed treason. There is blood on your hands. Therefore, I want you. Kahira and Kayan pull their swords and rush side by side toward ten of them. They are moving purely on the aggression of their losses. Mayoria from a distance throws her daggers connecting with the bodies of those whom Kahira and Cayenne are clashing and slashing at. The High Knight cannot believe all of his men are being defeated. The High Knight says, You all must fall! He casts an ice spell at them which scatters them from each other. 
None are actually caught in the ice with the envelopes the ground they were standing on coming directly from the night. Mayoria, once she has her balance, responds by casting a water spell. A flood of water forms near her and rushes toward the hot night, knocking him off his feet. Kahira and Cayenne use this to rush in on the night and strike at him from both sides with sword attacks, which he counters. Kahira performs the Swasu side, which catches the high knight off guard, to which Cayenne uses as a distraction to fittingly incapacitate the high knight, stabbing him in his side. Kahira hollers, We have to get out of here. The king, who was watching from afar, gasps and summons more knights to take the group. As a herd of knights come their way, the group rushes to get away. A helpful mercenary comes along and says to the group, Follow me, I am John. They run behind John as he leads them to a boat which they hop in and are led out of Rasusi's kingdom into the open shore. Chapter 2. Enter Morica. As evening sets in, a female voice seemingly speaks from nowhere to the crew on the boat, saying, Well, quite a revolting way to leave a kingdom, eh? Warriors or whatever you call yourselves. John turns his head and looks up and says, Hey, a fairy. Kahira says, Hey, a fairy. What is the meaning of this? The floating female fairy re replies, Well, Kahira, I want you. I have seen the route you are going to take, future friend, and I must prevent it because of the danger. But I will help you with the new one, for I am Maroka. Maroka solely looks toward Kahira and doesn't seem to notice the others as though she has a sort of fixation. Kahira asks, how did you come across this knowledge about us? Marika looks at him, smiles, and says, oh, honey, it came in a wonderful dream. Us fairies are known for our prophetic dreams. I was drawn to you by it. We can sense the kindred to us path. Kaira says, although I don't trust you personally, you may come along because the others might grow to like you and we could use your white magic. Maroka says, hmm, well, I like you too, like me. Kaira reluctantly replies, well, we can't get what we want now, can we? Maroka floats down near Kaira and sits on the edge of the boat. As they arrive at their destination, John says, I help you all because King Rasusis is a tyrant, vicious with his control and taxation. Welcome to Bayou Strait. May Ritalashu be with you. I'll be on my way. He drops them off in the docking area of Bayou Strait. Mayoria says, thank you for your services. John then sails off. Cayenne says, it's getting late. We should make a stop and leave. Mayuria says, I need more daggers and I think that the home of the blacksmith should sell it. Kahira says, okay, you and Cayenne go then. As they walk off, Maroka says, are you trying to get me alone? To which Kahira replies, oh shush. Cayenne knocks softly on the door of the house bearing the blacksmith sign and a suspicious looking man answers. The blacksmith says, I am Garagio Staff, best blacksmith in the land. What may I do you? Mayuria says, we would like to buy some daggers. Giorio invites them inside with that hand gesture. As they enter, Giorio says, well, me lady, look at me variety of six kinds, pointing at a wall with various daggers on different rows. Mayuria says, how much for that? Pointing at the top row. Giorio replies, 12 pounds apiece. Mayuria says, five. Cayenne pays and they go on their way. 
Why you or your mumbles best in the land? We shall see. In their youths, Kahira and Kayan were taught to weld swords together with the intent to protect their families. Kayan himself taught his wife in their youth to weld both the sword and daggers. Her family for generations has been skilled and trained in casting spells. They all, with Kahira's deceased wife, Minyu, were friends since early adolescence. Later on, in the Hayu region, they camp out. They sleep on the cold floor of the earth using only light sheets they bring with them as cover. The next morning, Kahira wakes up with the so-called strategy. Kahira says, listen, everyone, listen good. I have a strategy. I think we should travel to all the shrines of the sorcerers and destroy them. This way, we will get the sorcerers' attention and draw them to us. They will have to face us. Now, Yoya says, your strategy sounds a bit barbaric. But Cayenne, looking toward her, says, but it actually could work with adjustments which we can utilize as we go. We just happen to be in the area of Naira where a shrine exists. Let's go there. Although Mayoria and Cayenne give each other an odd look after the conversation, they speak no more words. They just head toward Nora. Nora isn't that far off. Maroka acts as a guide when they lose sight of what direction to go in. As a fairy, she is a natural guide able to draw any location. When they arrive, they speak no to no one, but standing by a tent, a male teenager with a grayish complexion wielding a rather large lance begins to smile. As they come closer, he says to them, Hey, you all seem the serious type. How about a little excitement in exchange for a smile? To this, Kahira says, Wander off, men of my follower, or you may find yourself in hells. The team replies, Huh? I am no Minamai follower, violent one, but I am aware of what he is up to. Kahira pulls his sword, aiming it toward the teen's throat. The teen drops his lance with his hands raised, and the others are startled by his action. Kahira thinks, a wisecracker, and says, Minamai follower, we are not here to play games. You can help us, not excite us, do so. Do you know of a way into the shrine? The teen, frantic knocks the sword away and says, I'll say it again. I am no man of my follower. I'm Suru, a summoner of Norai, and I can help you in the way acts. Just watch your violent tone. Moroka then flies in between them and says, Kahira, my love, please. It means well. Give him a chance as you gave me. Mayoria walks up to Suru and says, poor lad, we came seeking trouble. Sorry you happen to be caught in the middle. Can you please help us? Suru replies, such a beautiful lady. Kayan says, my wife. Oh, uh, my apologies, says Suru. Yes, I will. Though from word of mouth, I can tell you all Minamai is in Amoeba. He has joined with the eldest and most powerful sources of Rajaka. They plan on bringing about the rebirth of the mystic dragon Ryu. Moroka says, Ryu, the dragon of hidden Ryuka? Mayoria thinks we may even we may be even more over our heads than prior thought. Kahira says, Oh of of Ryu? This is worse than I thought. Maybe by destroying their shrines we can truly track them. We should head for Amoeba next. Suru says, Can I join you? Kahira reluctantly says, I guess, though I don't trust you. The information you supplied is of value. Suru smiles. Then Suru says, okay, follow me. Beyond the tinted area of Nuru is the huge shrine of Manami, which originally was a portion of a mountain. As they head off, Suru and Marika are filled in on why Kahira, Kayan, and Moriori are on their path. Moroka, though, was aware of everything before meeting them due to her prophetic dreams. Soon, they are climbing through a portion of Menemon's nose. When they climb through, Suru says, I used to always sneak in here when I was younger. Kayan, what a fascinating place. Kahira replies, forget the looks, we must find the core. There should be a protector, one who holds this blasted place up. Now, walking in front of the other, Suru says, yeah, follow me. Kahira lowly says, 
watch young Moroka as he reveals he is the demon. Moroka thinks, who's he calling young? Mayoya asks his servant, curious question, even if you are not a follower of Menemi, why would you help us against your people's deity? Suru says, he is not my deity. I am faithful to Ritalishu and Erishu. In times past, Ryu and the other followers were all worshipped despite their atrocities and power-hungry ways. I always understood they were but flesh and blood and should be accountable as such. I could tell from Kahira's demeanor, you all had been hurt badly by Manami's actions. I needed something to do for my life. Eventually, Sir Ruth says, look in amazement, there he is, I mean it is, and a room filled with stairs going in all directions is a blue structure, circular in shape of magical substance, with the sleeping beast inside, its eyes open. Everyone but Kahira reacts and steps back. The magical energy disappears and a small demon spins until it fully reveals itself. It smiles at the group, then shoots towards it. They all jump from the sight of it, approaching, save for Kahira, who draws his sword. When the demon is within five feet, Kahira with precision begins slashing with all his might in all directions. He moves in and pierces the demon. Kahira gives the creature no chance to attack. He slices away, killing the beast. Once down, he calmly states, down with the slates, and walks off. The others are in a state of shock of the creature and Kahira's actions. As they come to, Mayoria casts a fire spell near the entrance that came they came in directed toward the blue energy structure the beast stemmed from. Once it reaches the structure, it explodes and causes enough damage to begin the collapse of the entire structure. They rush out only to see Kahira still walking with the blood of the beast on him. A huge chunk of the shrine falls into itself. Suru begins to say, he's a but it's cut off by Cayenne, who says, whatever you think of him, he's a voice. He has suffered enough, and he is my best friend. I suggest if you wish to stay with us, control your mouth. Suru stands still with his arms folded and looks at Cayenne, walk away. Then with his head down, follows. Kahira says, okay, everyone this way to Amoeba. Moroka says, a guy's wrong way. Cayenne says, no, he's right. Moroka thinks, foolish ones, I'll get to buy you straight if I am correct.